like a 10 seconds maybe maybe a minute or so let some people gather on while they're coming on i'm so glad that you're on here shanna am i pronouncing that correctly yep shanna, shanna. like banana shanna like banana um and your physical therapist as well as an entrepreneur business owner and network marketing professional <laughs> Uh, uh, massage but, therapist, but yes. Not sorry. Oh, what did I say before? You said physical therapy. Oh, I said physical therapy. My, my mistake. My, my they mistake. had to go back to school and get a doctorate. I didn't like school that much. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. So, so glad to have you here. And I guess I want to just kind of open up the floor to you. And well, before we do that, let's just take a nice deep breath. For anyone that's watching on here, go ahead and just take a nice deep breath. <sighs> The breath is so important. Oh, yeah. In these times when people are panicked and the whole world's gone crazy, you have the power to breathe. Use it. So now that we've taken a nice deep breath, kind of refreshed the air, I want to open up the floor to you. Just kind of share a little bit about your journey, how you ended up being a massage therapist, how you ended up doing your other business ventures that you have just you know yeah yeah thank you so much and thank you for all your guests who are watching and may be watching later as well uh, my name is Shanna Lee Moore and I'm actually native to Southern California I grew up in San Diego I live in uh, North County now so close enough to go and visit the things and places and people I like and far enough away that I don't have to deal with old drama if I don't want to and um, I've been a massage therapist for the last 12 years professionally, so since I graduated in 2007. And when I first got out of school, I was just looking to work for someone else, and I actually got hired on as the massage therapist for a chiropractic office, and after a few years, they expanded to more of a... Um, pain relief center. So they included other services besides chiropractic and massage. They had acupuncture and physical therapy, and then they even hired some medical doctors in case they needed to do injections or prescriptions and things like that. So it was really exciting to see how a company grew from, you know, five people to 25 people. And um, <clears throat> while I was working there, um, I guess the way I became a massage therapist in the first place was that I had always given friends and family massages as I was growing up and everyone thought I was good at it. So I was at a point in my life where I was a single mom to my oldest daughter. She's 15 now. And I learned that, you know, if I went to school and got certified, I could do massage as a career. And that full time for massage was only about five or six hours a day. And that in my mind made sense because that meant she was going to be in school eventually for five or six hours a day. And I wouldn't have to work and be away from her. Cause when my mom was a single mom uh, and supporting our family, we didn't get to spend a lot of time together. And so my you know, motivating factor mm -hmm. was to have that time to spend with my daughter. And so I went through the training. It was a nine month program. It took me a little while to get hired. I have some really funny stories about licensing and everything because back then it wasn't a statewide license. It was city by city. So if you wanted to be mobile and travel, you needed different um, licensing for every place you went to. But I got this job at the pain relief center and I was comfortable there. I, you know, budgeted the bills off my paycheck and then uh, used private clients for fun things. Like if we wanted to go to amusement parks or take road trips or something like that. But I met uh, an, a more business-minded lady when I was actually doing a street fair to try to get more business for the company. And uh, that's how I got involved with my first direct sale company. So she came up and she introduced herself and, you know, asked a few questions about me. I asked a few questions about her. And she's like, you know, what do you do? I do massage. What do you do? I, oh, I do this water thing. I'm like, oh, well, water's good. I have to tell people to drink water after their massage. Maybe I can tell my owner about this and, you know, then we can get this for our clients if it's better than, you know, what we already have in the office. And she said, if you learn about it first and then they like it, you could benefit financially. And I was really excited. So I just kept her information myself instead of passing it along right away. And I think that resonated with me because I was I was commuting to work. I was driving over 60 miles a day uh, round trip. 
And I'd been there with the company for a while, but I hadn't had a raise for a while. They were really great to me in the beginning. And I think they kind of capped myself out and didn't realize how quickly that would go if we did a dollar increase each time. Mm -hmm. And I was supporting a family of four at that time and uh, still getting government assistance. So one day, you know, when she was trying to meet up with me, we'd been going back and forth a little bit on the phone. And she's like, you know, at the end of the month, after you drive and you pay for childcare and you do all that stuff, how much money do you have left? And I was like, well, if I'm on government assistance and I'm getting, you know, free resources or discounted resources, that means I don't have anything left over at the end of the month because somebody's giving me something. So it, to learn about a new way to do business and to change my mindset and not have to believe that I had to only exchange time for money. The reason massage therapy is only five or six hours a day is because it's physically demanding. And so you can't really do it for eight or 10 or 12. You, you know, there's only so much overtime or extra work you can do when you're physically right. exerting your, your, yourself. So to learn um, different ways of thinking, I started reading different books. You know, she had some Robert Kiyosaki su suggestions and some other um, mm -hmm business books that have been great over the years. I have probably way too many to think of that I've read. <laughs> but yeah, um, I love books. Yeah. I, and what I love now is just meeting people on the same journey, like the people that are the coaches and the podcasters and the interviewers and the entrepreneurs that we all have the same hunger and drive for something different. And we don't want to be the 95%. We don't want to be told what to do and when to be there and what to wear and how to talk and act. And I mean, I still believe that love is like the best foundation. Like if you're doing anything out of love, you're probably not doing anything really wrong. But um, outside of those guidelines, just some of us do better with structure and some of us don't. And even for my kids, I have my oldest, she's in high school now. But she's doing a blended schedule. So she has a couple classes on campus and the rest is online. Mm. My younger daughter was so excited with this, uh, you know, kind of closure of everything. She's like, you get to homeschool me now, mom, because we've talked about it before. Like, do you want to still go to school, be with your friends? Do you want me to teach you things at home? She's like, well, I'll go to school and be with my friends, but I still want you to teach me all the stuff that that they don't teach me there. Mm -hmm. So um, we are our kids first, you know, teachers when we're. Yeah. When they're born, they're entrusted to us, and I need to teach myself better things so that I can in turn turn around and teach them better things so that they can continue to surpass and expand and go above even where I've made it to. Mm. Yeah, that's so uh, that's so true. What I guess my question is, like, what is the biggest – like, what are some of those lessons that you're like, that they aren't teaching in schools? I kind of love that we kind of are on this topic because I have my own whole thing about the education system, but, yeah. um, you know, what <laughs> is, you know, what are some of those lessons that maybe the people watching the people listening, or even myself, like, maybe I haven't even learned them yet, but I'd love to hear like what you're teaching to them. Yeah. So, I mean, I posted a quote the other day that when we're born are two we're only born with two fears and it's the fear of falling and the fear of loud noises and everything else is something that we're taught or learned or by not teaching and learning something different kind of like as default is what we're programmed into. And there's so much negativity. Like you can see it right now all over Facebook and the news. And there's uh, two very distinct groups of people. There's the people that are kind of in a panic and uncertain and not knowing what they're doing. And they're kind of, quarantining themselves or shrinking back or being smaller or worried about their work. And then there's the entrepreneurs who are rising above and pushing forward and still sharing all the good news and all the work that we've been doing this whole time. But now we have more of a captive audience to hear it because people aren't supposed to be out and about. So for my daughter, you know, they're not teaching how to budget a checkbook or how to use credit. They don't teach them any, uh, home economics or cooking or, you know, household skills anymore. They don't teach them any automotive. As far as I know, certain schools, you can get specialty classes. But if we go back and, you know, to our parents or our grandparents' generations, those were basic things that were still taught in school. They're even eliminating the art, music, and PE programs in a lot of schools. My, my younger one goes to a charter. So they've uh, 
they've kept those programs. Mm -hmm. But in a lot of public schools out there, you can't even have some of the extracurriculars because of the budget cuts. And those things all help us add value and they create balance. And it's whenever our body or our life or our minds are out of balance that we have these confusion and panic times. And so the deep breaths and the grounding and being in nature and, you know, finding what you're passionate about and really figuring out how to be of service to the world, that's not being taught in school. They maybe give you an aptitude test here or there so you can see what some of your strengths are. But I've always told my daughter, I was like, find what you love to do or what you enjoy doing and then figure out a way to make money with it. So if you love painting, sell your paintings. If you love, you know, arguing with me, maybe you should be a lawyer. That's my little one. (laughs) So I just want, I, I had a few passions when I was younger. I really loved photography and I had someone tell me that it was a hobby, not a career. And so I never pursued it. I take a lot of pictures and I post a lot on Facebook and people ask me why. I'm like, cause that's one of the things I love to do. I love writing. I write poetry. I'm going to write a couple of books coming up soon. So maybe they'll sell, maybe they won't. But at this point, they're just more for me because it's something I enjoy. So I really enjoyed always helping people. And so the massage, since I was already naturally inclined to give that to people, went right along with that. I was like, okay, now I can make money with it. And then when I learned about the water technology, it was like, okay, people have to drink water after their massage. You have to flush out the toxins. You know, you need this for your, you know, it's a basic need. No one can argue that we don't need water. You can go, you know, a couple of weeks without food, but you can only go a couple of days without water. So that part made sense. That was easy. Now it's just like, okay, why was this different? So, you know, there's videos, there's tests you can do. It shows the differences in the properties. And I, you know, didn't even really know I was unhealthy as I was because I was already drinking a lot of water and I knew I needed at least, you know, half my body weight in ounces. And I was, you know, eating okay. You know, I've learned more about reading labels and chemicals and processed things as my journeys progressed, which, you know, that's all we do is try to be better every day. Mm -hmm. We're not going to learn everything overnight. And so it's like a lot of times I can get down on myself or if I'm not having the right mindset, I can, feel like I haven't helped enough people or I haven't succeeded in my business or I don't have, you know, the goals achieved that I wanted to, but I have to always step back and look at where I came from. And on top of that, that I'm still raising my kids and I'm still helping them with their activities. And it's not ever like a full time project for me. None of, none of my businesses are because I'm fitting it in between where I can. And, you know, my daughter's a cheerleader, my little one's in Taekwondo. And so it's, I still wanted them to be my first priority. I still have to go out. I still have to network. I still have to take phone calls. One time we were at an amusement park and they asked, you know, why, why are you on the phone when we're supposed to be here? And I said, okay, I can take this phone call for five or 10 minutes while we're here. Or I could be having a regular job at an office somewhere where you don't see me all day. Which one do you think sounds better? Mm. so that kind of put it in perspective for them because it was like yeah we do get to see you we do get that time with you sometimes you know it's not always right now like at that moment but it it is there and I get to do the field trips and go on the mm-hmm. you know it's like the greater going to the class. yeah I'm yeah I, I think so mm. since we're having fun I want to show you my smurf cup because that's a lot of fun yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I asked my daughter to pick out my most fun shirt for me today. And I have lots of cartoon shirts and she picked out my skydiving shirt, which I thought was cool since we t- just talked about mm-hmm. the you know fear of falling and the fear of loud noises. So I've ar- already conquered those fears. I love loud noises because my other favorite thing to do is go to concerts. Mm-hmm. So right. <laughs> they've canceled all of them at the moment, which is irritating. Yeah, and they probably have canceled <laughs> skydiving too. Hey, you're out in open air. <laughs> That's right. That's right. The There's got to be a loophole here somewhere. Extreme social distancing. You constantly are skydiving. Like you land and then you get back in the plane. You go up there again, just continually. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. That would be fun. <laughs> yeah. That's such a good. Thanks for sharing all of that because there's so much. Um, there is so much of this like 
you know, you're just, you're absolutely right. Where basically there's so many people who go to work and now it's like a weird time where they're not at work and they're like, what am I supposed to be doing with my time? Um, but, you know, even inside of that, you know, there is, there are always compromises that need to be made, you know? And like, so like you schedule a day to go to the amusement park with your kids. And also like, maybe you need to make a phone call during it, you know? doesn't need to be all the time but maybe it's just some of the time you know and but for the most part you know when you look at it kind of like 50 50 000 foot view when you're skydiving um now it's more like 10 10 000 feet i don't know how high they skydive from but i think it's 15 or 20 i don't remember mm -hmm. so when you're from that range looking down, you're like, yeah, this is all net positive. This is like a really positive thing for your, my life. Hmm. Well, I want to ask who, what is, so I'm not even super familiar with this, but what is, who needs massage therapy? I think everybody needs massage therapy. Some people have grown up thinking it's more of a luxury service, but it's, part of self-care and with our stress and our technology and how busy we all are these days, it's really mm -hmm. a time for you to unplug and breathe and focus on yourself. Sessions are usually between an hour to two hours. You know, if you're getting a private session, I have done, you know, chair massage for corporations that are, you know, five to 30 minutes but even that, it's been shown to increase productivity in the workplace and have uh, the employees have a happier morale because they have something to look forward to. And they get that little reset instead of, you know, getting tired and grabbing another cup of coffee at two or three. They come in for their little session and then they're rejuvenated afterwards. So I think it's really important. They, you know, yes, they're trying to do social distancing right now. So they are limiting services that we can provide. Right. Um, I'm still, and I will always operate at the highest good for my person in front of me. So whoever my customer is at the time, my best interest is always, it's always what's in your best interest that I'm going to share with you. So I have still a few clients that if they haven't been sick and I haven't been sick and they're okay with it, I'm, I'm going to continue to see them one, because my business would not thrive otherwise. And also because I think it is a time that in this uncertainty or in this added stress, maybe they're home with their kids for the first time because they're not used to homeschooling or, you know, blended schedules, or they, uh, you know, they are worried about their job, that they need that time to still be able to, to, to care for themselves. When you're stressed, it compromises your whole immune system. So if you can maintain that positive mindset and decrease the stress that you're experiencing, you're not going to be as susceptible to any of the diseases or contaminants that are out there also. So that's another way that it helps. And then by incorporating the water, um, dehydration is the cause of a lot of ailments as well. And so when you're fully hydrated and you have superior quality that you're drinking, then you can in turn increase your immunity and have better health. It's got antioxidant properties. It has an alkalinity component and it's, and it's, uh, smaller molecules. So it's been restructured so that it can actually absorb on a cellular level better. Um, it's not going to give you that full bloated feeling in your stomach when you drink a lot of it. And in addition to that, you know, everyone's out here running around right now and they can't find the bottled water. They can't find the sanitizers and the cleaning products. And the one, the, the unit that I have, it makes other types of water besides just the ones for drinking. So I have one that is a very powerful um, sanitizer. It actually can disinfect and kill bacteria in 30 seconds. And there's been lab tests done on that. So for anyone who is out, you know, in my local area, if you can't find water or sanitizer, just reach out to me. You can send me a private message or probably give you my phone number or something at the end of this. And I'm happy to let you fill up some gallons of water to drink and, you know, make you some sanitizing water so that you can stay safe out there. Mm. I use it for cleaning my massage equipment and, in between, instead of using hand sanitizer, it's not drying on the skin like the alcohol-based ones are. Wow. So let's talk more about 
the okay so for anyone that's listening in right now or maybe later in the future um we're here with shanna lee moore and she is a massage therapist as well as a, a enagic representative what is it what's your job title there what's your job we're independent there? distributors independent distributor so let's talk but about yeah i mean the main job if you will is is edu- it's an education so we are basically doing the education and advertising for the company instead of paying marketing or commercials or billboards they are able to take the resources that as a company you would spend on marketing and advertising and give that back to us as their um, representatives right yeah so in so i know you met the woman at the fair and that's how mm-hmm. it all started and then how long mm-hmm. have you been working with that company so i've i've owned my unit my my device that makes the water for a little over 7 years now and i had a lot of health benefit right away like I said, I didn't know I was sick, so I didn't know I was going to have those experiences. But when I learned a little bit more about it, it, it made sense to me. So I got super excited about sharing, you know, from a health perspective. But I have to remember that the reason I first got started with this was to have another stream of income for my kids, to give them a better life, to have something I could do from my phone or from my home or from where I was with them. And so my main focus in the last, you know, couple of years or so, and especially now when people are looking for something that they can do from home is really how great of a business opportunity it is. The owner has a patented compensation plan. So it's really not like any other multi-level marketing or direct sale um, Mm -hmm. structures that are out there, which I love things that are different and unique. That's part of why people love me. (laughs) So, um, I, I know. And I and I was blessed because this was the first one that I learned about. I've learned about other businesses over the years just from getting to know people and seeing what they're up to. But mm-hmm. um, a, lot of, a lot of them, you know, people are getting, you know, worried and some of them have lawsuits and they've been misrepresented and, and there's not the quality of people that are involved that you really want. Like if you had, you know, a brick and mortar business, someone you could really trust, someone You know, basically you do business with people you like, know, and trust. Mm -hmm. So it was important for me to find a a company that had good integrity that was really out to help people and not, you know, for a bottom line somewhere, which was always kind of why I've been more entrepreneurial than really happy and satisfied working for other companies is because at the end of the day, they're still going to do what they're going to do. And they see me as an employee or maybe as an independent contractor, but they don't really see all of my talents and all the value that I can provide from the mindset of another business owner. And that's where I've had some trouble. Like, where are these people that want to partner with me? So I found them in the entrepreneurial community. They're not always going to have big, you know, brick and mortar locations. And at this point, that's even better because we don't have the overhead and we don't have the stress of maintaining that revenue. We can be able to have the time freedom and the travel and and do the fun in our life that we really want. Mm. Yes, Shanna. Yes. It's all about the fun. So much. So <laughs> I think that's what, what draws me, what drew me to entrepreneurship too. Like, so I went to school for um, music education for a lot of it, but then, <clears throat> then I ended up getting a degree in like music history and theory mm-hmm. and like music business. But I really, um, but the reason why I didn't really finish the degree. So the music education, when I was getting it, uh, I went through this period of time. It was like, I really want to like change the education system. Really want to have people learning and loving their life because there's so many people that like, I just, that's what I wanted to do. Right. So good. As I, as I went through the process of like getting closer and closer to becoming a teacher in a school, I was like, this is not, gonna actually allow me to impact the world in the way that I actually want and so from there I basically kind of meandered around for a while um 
not a while, I guess like shortly after I graduated school, I was like, well, I know I definitely don't want to like, I love music, but I don't necessarily want to use it at the time. I was like, it's probably not, I don't, I never really had a true desire to like be up on stage and like perform music. Like I mm. never really wanted to be a rock star. Like, it would, like that would have been cool, I guess. But like, it was never like, like I have some friends who I went to school with and they literally love performing. And I'm just, I was like, yeah, it's fun. But I don't know. Music has always just like been for me, you know, even though I studied it for a long time. Like I was like, hmm. Yeah. Anyway. Hmm. Uh, inside of that, you know, that's when I ran into, I was served a YouTube ad about how to make money online. And then, you know, moving down beyond that, it was, oh, like you can run an agency and you can help other businesses help more people inside of their business. And that's when I was like, mm, that's what I want to do. I just want to work with people and help them to help other people. Mm. And then... Yeah. And then the rest is history. The next couple of years have been history. Um, and now we're in 2020. And yeah. yeah, I'm just working on doing that, providing people with as much guidance as I can. But so I definitely, uh, that I was just, that resonated with me when you were like, yeah, like no one's going to see me for all of the amazing value that I am more than myself. Right. And that's another thing that's good, I think, to teach my kids, you know, I had them read the four agreements and just, you know, also to know that when you're on your path, there's always going to be someone that might try to come and knock you down. Like, because a lot of the unhappy, unsuccessful people, they don't know how to break through that yet. And if they're unwilling to learn, they try to bring people down to their level instead of rising up to the next one. And so I have to tell, you know, I still am sensitive. Yes, it's high school or yes, it's, you know, school or whatever situation they're in. But, you know, in five years, is this particular situation really going to matter to you? Do you really care what that person says if you don't ever have to see them again? So for my older daughter, you know, I've, I've allowed her to switch schools and change her schedule and do what she feels is best for her for her peace of mind, for her time uh, when she's doing the athletics. She doesn't have a lot of time to just sit and waste in the classroom. They do a blocked schedule at her school. So each class is like two hours long. Wow. And she was ad academically advanced. So she's finishing her assignment in 30 or 45 minutes. And the teacher's like, okay, you can play on your phone. I was like, you're not going to play on your phone for an hour and a half. Like we could just finish the assignment at home and then you can go do something else you need to be doing. And, you know, I think it was Grant Cardone that says, you know, you got to love your haters too, because <laughs> as long as people are thinking you. about you or talking about you, that means you're on their mind. Right. Yeah. You got the levels of awareness, right? And like, if someone's not, not interested is a level of interest. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> until, until you knocked on their door and, you know, they weren't thinking about you, they weren't thinking about your product and now they're thinking about it even though they're thinking about it, that I don't want it, they're thinking about it. <laughs> well, and somewhere that's still planting a seed, and maybe someday down the line they will find that they have a need for it. I, I, I don't like the whole, you know, sales, like, next, like, totally cut off communication and ties with everybody. I know some people that that's, that's their way of, you know, sorting and sifting, but I always have this hope that I can help someone somewhere, and I – know so many people and have come in contact with so many different products and services over the years that if I just listen to what they're telling me, I can probably recommend something for them. I'm not always going to get paid for that. That's just something I'm intuitively doing because I want to help. It's something mm -hmm. that I, I see if I add value to their life and I solve a problem for them. A lot of the times what's my first instinct is something that's unique and in individual, like, an example as I had my friend and she was uh, stressing about being able to prepare the chicken that she had in the fridge because it was getting close to needing to be cooked or else it wasn't going to be good anymore. And she had some personal stuff going on where her mom, you know, she needed to go visit her mom. She had ended up uh, going to the hospital. And I was like, why don't you just put it in the crock pot? 
then you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to stand here. It's it'll be done waiting for you when you get home. And she's like, oh my God, like that's like the best idea ever. So it totally solves her problem of not being able to have the time to prepare her meal and mm-hmm. then being able to go and spend it with her mom, which was more important, and having dinner waiting when she got home. So I, I just ah, – and that's part of the reason I'm doing so many interviews and different things. I'm kind of creating like a little library of mm-hmm. people, you know, so people can get to know me. I, yeah. I don't have unlimited amounts of time to take everybody's phone call or do video chats with everybody all day long, but – They could come and they can watch this and they can learn about me and they can see, you know, if anything resonates with them or maybe if they have a problem that they want some guidance through. I know I'm not going to call myself a coach because I I don't have any degrees or training in that. But, you know, anytime you're networking or or being in a social situation where your intention is to help the other person in a positive way, that's a form of coaching. It's a form of teaching. And so if we all – work together and get to highlight our individual unique strengths, then we can, what my weakness is, maybe somebody else's strength and vice versa. So it's more about the community or the tribe or, you know, they used to say it it takes a village, you know, to raise a child and just really, it's important who we surround ourselves with because, you know, you become like the five people you associate with most. And so that's another Mm -hmm. thing I've tried to teach my kids, you know, when they're picking their friends, like you always want to have somebody that you can help. And then you always want to have someone that they can help you because you never know what you're going to need in life. And I unfortunately had this imbalance before where I would help a lot of people. And then when it was my time that I needed something, they wouldn't always be there. So now I've learned that wisdom and I have that discernment and I get to move forward and go on and I can still help people. And, but now I, I help in a different way without, you know, expectation. Like I don't do loans anymore. If I'm going to give you something, it's going to be a gift. And then I don't have to think about it and keep track and tally everything up. Mm -hmm. I have, you know, I've got friends like, Oh, I bought lunch this time. You bought lunch this time, you know, and it's all planned and organized. And then I have other ones. It's like, we just call each other. We get together. Whoever has it, has it. And next time, it's, it's, it's the flow of abundance. And Mm -hmm. I think when I grew up, I had more of a scarcity mindset and it, it was really depressing for a while to just not have a way to escape or to get out of that or to know how can I make this better? And so it's, you know, it's like they say knowledge is power, but it's only powerful if you apply what you're learning, you can have all the knowledge in the world and still sit there and do nothing. And that's really a waste. Yeah. I was watching. Uh, I was watching. I don't know if you heard of uh, the knowledge knowledge broker or knowledge business blueprint. It's uh, Dean. No, but it sounds Gracio- good. Dean Graciosi. Uh, okay. And yeah. uh, Tony Robbins program. Yeah. Inside there, um, at the very beginning, they they talk about that. They're like, you know, there's an old adage that knowledge is power, but the true power is in execution. It trumps knowledge every time. Yep. So it's like having all the knowledge in the world doesn't do anything if you don't act on it. Yep. Yeah. So we're on here for anyone listening in the future. We're here with Shanna Lee Moore, and she is an amazing human being. How how would you like people to contact you if they're interested to connect with you? What would be the best? If I had- If I had memorized my Google number, I would give that out. But I'll just give out my regular number because I don't have it memorized yet. So I am in Southern California. So it's the 619 area code. My phone number is 619-204-5474. And I'll say it one more time. 619-204-5474. And I'm on Facebook, Shanna Lee Moore. It's... S-H-A-N-N-A-L-E-E-M-O-O-R-E. Same thing with Instagram. So private message, messenger, WhatsApp, phone calls. My email is my least favorite preferred method of contact. So we'll keep it it simple. Yeah. There's plenty of different ways to contact And like the email's on the website if you really want to go. So Okay, you can find her. Shanna Lee Moore, very. I feel like it's a unique name. Um, it really is. And then, uh, yeah, on the Facebook or give her a call. 
you know, who are you going to call? Shanna Lee Moore. It's not <laughs> Ghostbusters, but it's close. Um, yeah. So I want to kind of, I want to backtrack a tiny bit to what we were talking about just a couple seconds ago, uh, or a couple of minutes ago about the, the whole idea of, uh, I can't, I had it on the tip of my tongue, but now it's gone into the abyss forever, which is totally come back. fine because we're <laughs> just going to keep on flowing and moving. Oh my goodness. Shanna, I would love for you to express something over these past few days um, that you've just been really, really grateful for. Cause I think ta- now more than ever um, we as a general community of the world just need to be just putting more gratitude into the world. So that's what Absolutely. I'm curious about. So I am grateful to all of the friends that I have that have checked in on me and vice versa that I'm able to check in on. I'm grateful that a lot of us are still spreading the light and the positivity. I've got another friend of mine doing some online yoga tonight on a Zoom and, you know, podcast interviews, any videos. A lot of people are sharing, you know, stuff to counteract the news articles. They're sharing, you know, love and light and abundance. And that's fantastic at this time. There's people that are out there sharing opportunity and hope and just creative strategy for people that maybe haven't been around, you know, the entrepreneurial world as much. And yeah, there's going to be some negative stuff going on, but you will know in your heart, you know, if someone really cares for you or not. I got that social security number calling me the other day. I'm like, they don't call you. Why are you trying to scam people right now? He's like, Oh, if you think it's a scam, hang up. I said, I did hang up. You called me back from a different number, (laughs) but that was kind of fun too. Um, I'm thankful that I don't have to go look for bottled water or hand sanitizer and that I have my machine that gives me everything I need. And that I'm able to share that with others freely. I don't charge for water or anything. So You know, that's part of the owner's mission was to make sure this was accessible to everybody. So until they shut down the offices, uh, we give out water at all the offices. There's 40 locations in 23 countries all around the world now. Hmm. And as soon as we are allowed to be undistanced from each other, they will go back to that same model. And I am always thankful and grateful for my kids and the new opportunities I get to teach them things every day. I'm grateful for music. I love just being able to put on some good tunes and drive in my car or, you know, do the dishes and dance around the house. And I am thankful and grateful for the technology. Even if I don't get to use it to its 100% capabilities yet, I'm getting better and growing in all of those areas as well. So I'm working on getting together my YouTube channel and got my websites, you know, more streamlined and functioning. So... Facebook's always been my favorite, but I do reach out on Instagram as well to cover a few more platforms. The opportunity. Opportunity is the biggest thing to be grateful for right now. Because, you know, when we had our ancestors or grandparents or people go through other wars or depressions or things, they didn't have nearly as many ways to stay connected as we do now. So even though we're distance in space between us, we can still have these conversations and still, you know, see each other's faces and get to know each other and have can you see my face? fun. Not right now, but <laughs> <laughs> we're so, thankful for the technology, even if it doesn't function at its full capacity. <laughs> that's right. Okay. Yeah. Just so, so everyone knows that's listening, we're doing a live stream here. <laughs> in a certain platform, but because of whatever technical reason, I can see her and myself, but she can only see herself. And I'm that's trying not to look at me because I don't want to be self-conceited. <laughs> no, yeah, exactly. And that's the true problem with the internet. We're all looking at ourselves. No, I'm mm-hmm. just um, <laughs> but I, I want to, I agree. There's been so many, literally in all, I'm, I'm like feeling so blessed to be in this digital entrepreneur like I don't I was about to say cult but uh community culture Culture, (laughs) community yeah that's Um, what cult stands for anyways it's just the culture around something yeah so I'm so glad to be part of it because literally over the past couple days I've had multiple group 
calls that were of no purpose aside from just like getting together and just like sharing how you're feeling, sharing what's up in your life, like how all of this is kind of like affecting, you know, there's definitely been questions about, you know, what are we going to do? Like there's some like business things that come up, but a lot Mm -hmm. of it's just been like, how are you doing? Like being, everyone's like far away. Like I, I literally haven't left my house in a few days. Uh, I feel like I should because they're about to do like a real lockdown in San Diego. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm probably going to get go some for- zombie apocalypse supplies. <laughs> yeah. You know, but it's, uh, but overall I feel really like blessed because all the technology is already in place for all of my online friends to get together and just connect, you know? And, but it's for people who are not tech savvy and not in this whole world, you know, I, I'm really, I'm really curious. And I guess I want to try and be a moving force to have more positivity be in that, in that realm. But I always find it. So I'm, I do a lot of like Facebook ads and Facebook marketing and Uh I'm always curious to see what other people's Facebook feeds look like. Because mm. I know what mine look like. They're all filled with Tony Robbins and Dean Grazioso and positivity and people sharing about how they're helping people and their people ha- how people are making money and having abundance in their life. And it's like, so like this whole time, there have been a bunch of amazing leaders in the space who have been like, this is not like, this is an opportunity for you to double down on your passion, for you to like, for you to connect more deeply with people, for you to you know, reframe your business, you know, whatever it is, but it's all like from that positive light. And I'm curious about all of the people who are not in this entrepreneurial journey, you know, are they only seeing like coronavirus? We're all going to die. I don't know. I I Uh, have a few friends and they've, you know, posted that they are distancing from the social media now because of all the negativity negativity that they're seeing. So I, I do know that what you look at the most shows up the most in your feed. And so if they haven't counteracted that by clicking on the more positive links or, or doing any of that stuff mm-hmm. or sharing those stories, then they might only be seeing the doom and gloom. And that's really an uneasy feeling. It's a, it's a hard place to be at, to not have that hope. And, you know, some people are religious or spiritual and they believe in, you know, I I heard it the other day, someone said Gus. So it was, um, uh, what did it stand for? Oh, God, universe or source. (laughs) And so just kind of by calling it Gus included everything so that you're not offending anyone, you know, and you can be Mm non-denominational. But that's where that love comes from. If you look at any religion, usually they're, they're, their highest, you know, value is, is love. So if you don't have that love or that hope or that positivity in your life, you don't have a spiritual connection with something. You just think it's just you or that everything's a lie or that everything is just what's being presented. You know, that's when you can get in that downward spiral and you can go down the negative rabbit holes. And that's why we read and why we watch, mm-hmm. you know, documentaries or why we go on lives and do conversations with each other. And it's so that we can continue to raise that vibration. You know, you can do the meditations or you can listen to the binaural beats and you can do that kind of stuff too, you know, on your own. You can move your body, do the yoga, do the deep breathing. Mm-hmm. Even just, you know, s- sound with regular music, you know, depending on what you're listening to, it can either cause you to feel like mad and angry and anxious, or it can, you know, give you peace. So I've even changed some of the styles of music that I listen to. I used to really love a lot of rock and I'll still go get down in a mosh pit if I have one, but more of the positivity is going to be coming from like the reggae or, you know, different genres right now. So I'm going to be focused more on those because it's going to keep that peace and calming feeling instead of that anxiety. Yeah. Mm. You should play some music for us. 
I like, don't have my. I don't have anything with me. I can. We should schedule happy. another call where you play. You should do like an online concert. Yeah. I, I did an online concert the other day. I missed it. Is it it's, still posted? Can I go back and find still it? Still posted. It's still okay. posted. I'm probably gonna do another one tonight or tomorrow, <laughs> probably. Okay. Just me playing random music for a long time, but um, <laughs> it was like an hour long. But there was an issue. I wasn't doing it through this platform and I should have been, I was mm -hmm. doing it directly to Facebook and mm -hmm. all the audio was just consistently cutting out and apparently it was really choppy. And so it was a dud. It was a dud ah. of a performance. No, it, it was good. It there was were people practice. on there. <laughs> it was a ton of fun. And that's all I wanted to do. I was like, yeah, I'm going to, this seems, it was Monday night and I was like, yeah, this seems like a perfect time to just go live and play songs for fun mm. yeah and just put music into the universe I think do you write your own music or i do you write my own music but i was just playing a bunch of covers i was just playing you know i played uh tomorrow sun will come out tomorrow played uh oh a whole bunch of good a whole bunch of good tunes they were fun it was fun I'm smiling, so I'm smiling ear to ear right now. You can't see it, but I'm smiling. I, I can feel it, though. I can feel yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. So, anyone that's listening in on this conversation, I hope you're enjoying it. I hope you're remembering to be grateful and to connect with the people that you love. Mm -hmm. And we're on here with Shana Lee, Shanna Lee Moore, and I've actually pulled up her her Facebook profile, so you can connect with her on there. Facebook.com forward slash S H A N N A one five one three. That's Shanna one five one three on Facebook, or you can probably click in the uh, if there's a description below. You can click that or something. You can click somewhere. You can connect with her. She's just a joyful bud of possibilities and joy. And um, I want to ask you. We're coming. We we have about like maybe 10 left 10 13 minutes left um is there anything that we didn't talk about today that you're like yeah i really want to share about this still or i'd like to talk about this topic yeah i think just possibility because if you can think of it and dream it you can make it happen like i said it's maybe not going to happen tomorrow but to just never lose sight of what you really want. Like, I believe that we all are given this life to contribute and create and expand and add joy and love and light to each other. And there's too many people that are going around being negative. So even if just in the comfort of your own home with a notepad and paper and pencil, pen, whatever you like to write with, if you do, you know, your gratitudes for the day or you do your list of things you want to accomplish. And even if you don't make it all the way through the list, you transfer it to the next day. Something about getting it out of our head and onto paper really helps it come to fruition. That's why I write my poetry, because I can have all these jumbled up thoughts in my head. And as soon as I write it, I can sit down and I can write a poem in five minutes or less. I've timed myself before. I actually did a really amazing one the other day. I wrote to God, to, you know, my higher power. And then I got an answer. So they say prayer is you talking to God and meditation is you listening. And so it that was the first time I've ever done a two part poem like that, which I think is going to be. I think there's going to be more of those coming because I'm learning to get more quiet within myself and really not depend on all the external resources because we know everything we need to know. All of our power is already inside of us. That's how we're born. And all of our greatness is in there to shine to the world. We just have to stop being scared to let it out or stop trying to do it the way somebody else does. You know, you can you can learn good habits and things, but you still have to have your own unique individuality. I, I spent a lot of my time trying to copy everybody else and I was wondering why this wasn't working for me. And I was like, because that's not you. You're not that person. You're you, you're who you are. You're Shanna. 
Mm-hmm. And, you know, getting over the fear of not liking my voice or not liking how I sound or not liking what I look like on videos. What am I doing? I'm doing more videos. <laughs> so I don't have that as an excuse anymore. I need to break through the fear of picking up the phone because, you know, body language and tonality is so high in communication that when you're texting or emailing or doing something virtually, you already lose almost 80% of the conversation and, and communication style. And then that we wonder why people get upset with something that we text because they read it the way that it sounded in their head and we typed it the way that it sounded in our head. Yeah. And so to really feel that connection through someone's voice, like even though I can't see you, I could tell you were smiling because of how you sound. And so that's the magic. That's that's mad. It is magic. And it's it's relayed. And. I think it's just about slowing down. Like now we're forced to slow down. We're forced to really get grounded and get our clarity and we can either be productive and move forward or we can be destructive and and worry. And you know, worrying is like a rocking chair. You can do it all day, but it's not going to get you anywhere. So <laughs> um oh. now is the time to think about your biggest dream. Think about all the things you wanted as a child, all the things someone might have told you weren't possible and really just write it down and then reach out to people who are here and willing and wanting to actually help you execute those dreams and goals. Me, you, life coach, mentor, whatever you want to call it. There's people out there that this is what we love to do is to help you achieve what you want to do in life. And some of us get paid and some of us purely do it out of the joy we get from helping others reach a goal. And neither one is bad. Like you got to have money to survive, unfortunately, unless you're just using the trade and barter system, which I also love. I've got, I just went to the mechanic today and got my oil changed and I gave him a massage. (laughs) That's how we do business. So whatever your gifts and talents are, are not my gifts and talents. And we can exchange them and share. And that creates this flow of abundance and energy and unprosperity all throughout the world. So I think that's a good note. That's a fun, fun place to end. And I think you should go out and swing and blow bubbles, but I heard they closed the parks too right now. Mm. Yeah, they might have, but I'm going to go for a walk anyway. If you're listening, we're on here with Shana, Shana, Gosh, Shanna, Shanna like banana. That's why I tell you Shanna the trick. Like banana <laughs> Lee Moore. You can connect with her at Facebook.com forward slash Shanna two ends one five one three. And I hope that you all have an absolutely amazing day. Write it out, follow your passions, find mm-hmm. someone who's gonna help you and reflect that back to you so that you can become that vision of yourself. And uh that'll be that'll be it. Bye, everyone. Thank you so much, Michael. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Shanna.